Welcome everybody to the Investors Podcast 2.0, Wealth Mindset, where we dive into the minds of the successful real estate entrepreneur to uncover the tips and tricks that have allowed them to keep moving forward. I am your host, Scott Bauer, and I'm excited that you're here with us. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Investors Podcast. I am your host, Scott Bauer. Uh, excited to be here today because we're going to talk about some exciting stuff in the mortgage lending uh, space and just in the uh, investment space as well, obviously. But uh, the person that's going to shed some light on where we're at is Aaron Chapman, sitting here with me today. Uh, Aaron, welcome to the call. How are you? Hey, Scott. Doing very well, man. Good to see you again. Yeah, same, same to you. Uh, really excited. So a little backstory about Aaron. He comes from a diverse background, really. Before he was in the lending space, he did something totally different. Did some over-the-road trucking, did some welding. Um, totally different space than, than the lending organization. But since 1997, uh, that's when I, th I believe he got started in the, the, the uh, lending space. He's really taken off. And I believe you're, would you say you're ranked number 14 out of 3,000? Is that what I, is it, did I read that correctly? Uh, 14 out of 300,000. So it's actually a little bit more than 300,000 people in our industry. And the average person in my industry does between three and four transactions per month. And I did 723 last year. So that just speaks loads of volume about what, you know, about his volume. But he comes to the table with a lot of experience. I think that, you know, I'm glad that you're here today because you're going to learn some stuff. Um, so, Aaron, why don't you give the listeners a little bit more in-depth of your background kind of really what you're focused on, how you got to over 700 and over 100, 700 transactions in 2019. Um, and we'll kind of just dive in. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that, that quick little intro. So what uh, I come from a blue collar background, as you illustrated, my dad was a, uh, was a miner most of my life. And then we had an opportunity to uh, own a cattle ranch in my high school year. So from the beginning of my high school years, I was, I was in, on a horse, man. I was, we were running cattle 500 head a year. Uh, I was beef cattle up in central Utah. I was running equipment to do, to you know, as far as the haying was concerned and taking care of the fields. It was it's a great job. It was a great time, but also just it, it kicks your butt, right? But right. you get to learn about a business plan. It is the simplest business plan in the world when you start dealing with either agriculture, you know, of of the of the, uh, the, the the planting variety or the cattle. There's a process that has to be followed, or or it doesn't work. So we can add our little twist to it, right? You, you, you breed two different types of animals together as far as a, an Angus with a uh, Simmental or whatever, and you end up getting you know, kind of that hybrid vigor and you get a faster growing animal and we, we actually get bigger profits. Well, I was able to graduate through high school halfway through my senior year with enough credits, which was awesome because I just cheated my ass off. You know, I didn't even want to go on to college. I didn't want to do any of that kind of thing. And so what I did was I was able to, at that point, um, go to the oil, oil fields of Wyoming and to work in the, and work as a welder, actually kind of a welder's helper in the field, but a welder in the shop on, and on uh, mine sites and then on the gas plants along the plains of Wyoming. And that was an interesting environment to learn in uh, about human dynamics. And we had opportunities to really see who was what out in the field when stuff went bad. I mean, when a fire breaks out in a gas plant, you get to know who it is that's going to take care of it and who the hell is getting away. You know, and I was, you know, I was 18 years old and I'm jumping off of catwalks into these pipe areas, running through there, grabbing uh, fire extinguishers, trying to put this thing out because there's, you couldn't run far enough from that place. If it went up, everybody was dead for a hundred miles. Right. So it was me and the, and the workers jumping in there where the management were running out the door. Right. So that was an interesting, interesting to experience. And there's a lot of stories there. Then from there, I came back to, to the Phoenix area running heavy equipment, digging swimming pools. I drove truck for a while. And then I found an opportunity to work in the mines with my dad in northern New Mexico. So several hundred feet underground, drilling, loading that stuff up with, with explosives. I put in 200 pounds of explosives per round, step around the corner, blow that sucker up, dig it out, redo it. It was awesome. Then they shut down the project. And I had to come back here to a wife and infant son. And, you know, I'd saved up some capital, but my wife had a major medical issue that they claimed a pre-existing condition. And we had to pay for cash. So we were completely out of money at that point. And what I had to do then was um, try and find a job. So I thought, you know, I've got a background running heavy equipment, mining, truck driving. I'll get one easy. Couldn't find one. I was hunting, hunting, hunting. And I remember one day I decided to even try a landscape, landscape um truck driver, you know, a guy hauling landscape rock. 
And uh, when I went to this place to to get this job, they turned me down for this ten dollar an hour job because I was overqualified. Well, as I drove away from there, literally tears coming down my eyes, my gas light comes on on my truck. And I was on my way to a grocery store. My wife gave me a coupon for diapers for my infant son, free diapers. And as I as I'm driving up to the store, I got that the gas light come on, so I went and pulled up to the uh, pump and um, tried to pump gas and ran my credit card, or debit card actually, and it got declined. So I didn't have any money. I'm going through my, um, my truck looking for cash. I found a, uh, some change, right? Started walking a parking lot for two hours. I collected enough change to get two gallons of gas. I went to the store, took my coupon, got the diapers. As I'm walking out, I end up face to face with a guy who used to do this scheduling work and run the office of this company I used to dig swimming pool like two years before. So he asked me how things were and I explained my situation. Well, the next night he took me and my wife to dinner with a gift card or actually a gift certificate, didn't have cards back then, to Red Lobster. There he introduced me to this industry by introducing me, give me the business card for a, for a branch manager at a mortgage broker shop. From there, I went to, you know, I had to cut a foot off of my hair, I had to clean up, shave, and I went in and I started as a telemarketer that weekend. It was December of 1997. And it was, it was hell getting used to, right? I did go back to running, actually went back to, went to truck driving. I got a truck driving job going to Sacramento back once a week, then Vegas and back, and then three days a week I'd work trying to build a business in the mortgage industry doing refis, and that wasn't working. So then I went back to running heavy equipment. I'd get up at 3 a.m., be the job site by 4, work till noon, go to the office by 2, and work till 10 every day for a year till the rates went below 7%, and then it just took off. Now, it didn't take off like, explosive, it was enough to replace my income. And it took me years. I mean, you know, probably about 18 years. So I really built my business up following very patterns, looking at different businesses. Now I run a business like, you know, real estate investment business for, or a real estate investment finance business. Like Chipotle runs a burrito construction business, I have a different person doing different stages. So I have 16 employees. I'm going to have four more by the end of next month. I have 20 of them building deals for my clients. And I'm just out there shaking my ass, bringing business in. And um, that's where we've been doing 2017, 676 transactions, 2018, 703, 2019, 723. And then uh, actually 2018 was 707. So 2019 was 723. This year, we're already 150 in. So, you know, congratulations, by the way. I mean, that, that's a, you've, you've really had to step through a lot of hoops in order to get to where you're at today something my hats off to you uh, for going through that because I know that the pain is real, but I want to find out is how did you, how did that, I mean, how did that feel? How were you able to mentally get over that when you were walking through, you know, the parking lot, picking up change just to find gas to put in your vehicle so you can get back to your, your wife and infant daughter, you know, I mean, from a mental standpoint, man, that is, that is a barrier for a lot of people. A lot of people could shut down at that point. They really could. Right. So what was that driving factor for you that allowed you to keep moving forward and say, you know what, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to go figure this out. Now some cards were played to you correctly because of the individual that you met in the parking lot later on or whatever. But still, I mean, you, you were at a point when a lot of people out there would decide to go the other way. And there's a lot of people that are in that scenario today, even though, you know, the market's good and things are great, whatever. They're, they're maybe not happy with what they're doing. They want to make a change. How did you mentally get over that? You ask a really, really good question, Scott. Because um, it brings up a lot of emotion to put myself back in that, back, back to that stage. Sure. To who that guy was standing in that parking lot, right? Um, it, it, it is. It's an emotional thing for me to be able to think of because I, I, I didn't have any choice, right? I had people depending upon me. Now I was young. I was in my early 20s. Got married very early in life, and you know we're, we weren't even married a, just over a year, and we had my son. And I just, you know, it, I wasn't ready for that kind of responsibility, but I had it. It was on me. I didn't have a choice. Yep. So what it, I just had to take whatever opportunity was in front of me and move forward with it. And at that time, the only opportunity I had was was picking up change. And when I think back on that whole scenario, you know, I have to I have to thank God for each person that reached in their pocket or was handling the change at the time and it dropped out of their hands. And the fact that it wasn't, I wasn't, uh, it wasn't happening when it was a heavy credit card era, right? Because every single coin I picked up, when you consider the time it took to get those coins, those two hours approximately, 
and then the time it took to go get that, I, that's where I end up face to face with that guy. If it was a minute before, a minute after, that may not have happened. We might not have this conversation. I don't know. All I know is it's extremely humbling to think that there's a plan out there for you. There's an opportunity out there for you. You just have to move forward. You know, I could have sat in the truck and cried and threw my hand up in the in the air. I could have just said, you know, like you said, shut down and you know, tried to call my wife and or, who knows? I could have called for help and just sat in my truck. But I took, I, I, I did something. And me getting up out of that truck and walking through that hot, stinking ass parking lot, and it was, it was in the summertime, it was freaking hot. Um, it, it led me, it led me to something that I didn't, I wouldn't have got otherwise. You know, so I, what I, the, the lesson I tell everybody is that you just don't stop. I don't give a damn what the circumstances are, you don't stop. And I think that's the attitude I had because that's what I was taught by my dad. We never, ever, ever stopped. We never shut down, we never sat down. If sometimes you had to rest, Sometimes you had to get your bearings, but get your ass back up and keep moving. And that's what I had to do. And by moving just fast enough, I was able to meet with fate, which was an interaction at a grocery store entrance. Changed my life. Now, it didn't change it overnight. That's the other thing. People think that, hey, you know, maybe if I start doing this, it'll change it overnight. No, this is 22 years. 22 years. And do you think anybody handed me to this business? No, I worked my guts out. I'm still working my guts out. With the market freaking out the way it is right now, I'm at it from 4 in the morning till 8, 9 o'clock at night. I'm kicking my ass. But that's the only way to be successful is to never freaking stop. I mean, remember what the, you know, the Linda Hamill said, Hamilton said in The Terminator. He will not stop. That has to be you. Every person listening to this, I don't give a damn what your circumstances, that has to be you. Well, and that's really what I'm looking for because, be, you know, you did. You made a decision to take action, right? You took action and you, and you weren't willing to give up. And so that is something that I think every entrepreneur or every, every person out there that's, you know, in a, in a business, you have to have that mentality because, you know, when life knocks you down, are you going to get back up, right? When life, because it will, it's going gonna, it's gonna to knock you down. I mean, I would, I would say there's a ton of people out there that are very successful today. Wait till, because the punches are coming. They're coming and can you handle them? Right. So thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Well, it, it just so you know, it has to knock you down. Yep. If it doesn't knock you down, then you're not doing something right. The thing of it is, is we, if we don't ever take a header into the concrete, we never know if we have the balls to get back up. Right. So that's the thing is everybody needs to look at that. You have to hit the ground. Absolutely have to. It, it happens to everybody. Even the guys that, you know, that may have have a decent life. We we're talking about this this morning with my attorney. He's got a client who, who died and left her son a ton of money. He had a great life. The guy was already living well, but now he got millions of dollars uh, thrust on him. Now he's taken a header into the concrete. This is the time he did. It's when he got something he didn't know how to handle. It's going to happen. So why don't you do it when there's not a lot as much at stake? Take that beating now so later on you understand how to take a beating so when the time comes that you're blessed with the abundance, you know how to handle the abundance. Because abundance can crush you just as much as, as, as poverty can. Yes. Like right now, I'm being, I have abundance in clients. I have so many people come. There's been eight calls since we started this. I don't, can't, I don't even know how many emails. The abundance is crushing me. And if I don't know how to deal with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the ground one way or another. I'm glad I took it way back then when the stakes were low. That's right. That's right. And that's huge. I mean, those are, that's a massive point that you just made for the listeners. I know they're going to get a lot out of that. But let's fast forward now. So, you know, you, you got into the market, um, you did 22 years. So you started 97, it's now 2020. So everybody can do math, what was that 23 years, right? So, um, you know, that's a lot of time. Now let's talk about, uh, you know, kind of where, I mean, what does your run up look like? Like how, you know, you said you had 16 people that work for you. That didn't happen overnight, yep. right? Um, and you're gonna have four more, that'll be 20 people that work for you. Uh, by the end of next month, is that, did I hear that correctly? Okay. Correct. So uh, that's a whole nother mental shift because when you got into the business, um, which you, you talked about that, you started doing, doing loans, I guess, elaborate on that a little bit with us on the, on the run up, you know, over that 22 years or 23 years rather, what, what did that look like? And how was that from a mental shift standpoint as you rose? So it started out where, you know, this is broker shop where they've got, phone calls coming in all the time, right? This guy was the first person in the in the U, in Arizona's history to be able to get a billboard and post interest rates on the billboard, right? He, he knew people in the in the city and the state government. Well, right. um, my owner of the broker shop just got the phone string. So all I had to do is be present to take the call and, and build a quick relationship and get a loan going, right? 
what still wasn't easy. I mean, there was times I didn't even close one in a month, right? And you'd work every day, all day, every day trying to get these calls, and you still only close one deal in a month. So yet it was a very, very meager existence. Well, then you start getting to the point where you, you're understanding your business better, you're understanding how to handle it better, how to handle clients better. You start building relationships in the community. I started working with a with a realty executives agent close by, and he was sending some deals. So I started to get six, seven, eight deals a month going. I was I was beating the national average, right? And I kept at that. Well, then I got to a point where I got hired by uh, this ten thousand dollar bonus to go work for another company. Then it happened again with another company, and I'm like, it was kind of cool, man. People were wanting to do business with me and all these things, and and then I got or or wanting to hire me on and pay me a lot to be there. And then I was giving, giving condo projects to work on, and it was really really cool. Well, I got to a point where I was kind of full of myself, right? I, I, I negotiated a deal. I took a bunch of other employees from another company, made it sound like I was a baller, and I went to Countrywide Home Loans and brought multiple people with me. And I was their very first sales manager, and I started a new office for them, all full of all these guys that looked like something from Boiler Room. And, you know, they called us the frat house because I was in my, mid, uh, my early 20s. And I had all these guys in their 20s, and we were kicking ass. I was doing $12 million a month in business with all these guys. And I was their manager. It was amazing. But I got cocky. I got really, really, really cocky. And uh, 2008 happened, and I was right, heading out of town on my motor on my on the on a Harley. I just ordered a 2008 Harley Crossbones. It didn't, didn't come in, so they gave me a brand new Road King. It was a fleet bike to ride. 15 minutes into that ride, I was taken out, man. I got uh, put into the uh, into the hospital in the ICU. Uh, I had to have multiple surgeries. It took my pretty much destroyed my legs, snapped my feet off. It was it was bad. Collapsed lung. So I had to learn how to walk again. It took my memory from me. I had to train my memory back. I came back. You and a, I left the hospital. Did you have a brain injury? What's that? Do you have a brain injury? Uh, I had a helmet on, but it did give me a, a bad enough brain injury where it did wipe wipe a lot of my memory. Um, and then what happened when I came out of the hospital, you know, I went in at 195, 190 to 195 pounds, seven to 8% body fat. I was a, I was a runner. I was a climber. I was all that kind of stuff. I wheeled out at 156 pounds. Wow. You know, I'm six foot one. And that was not, you know, imagine what that looked like, right? So I'm sitting in a wheelchair getting wheeled around. I needed help for, for a lot of things. Got you know, the basic thing a person has to do, I had, I want, I'm, and it's just that I did certain things on my own because I'm not having somebody carry me into the bathroom, but. It was something where it was a battle, man. It was a battle. I had to learn a lot about Aaron Chapman at that point. And the thing that was tough was coming back from that and, you know, the, all this stuff, learning how to walk again and all that. The tough part was not the walking, not the physical repair. It was here. Yeah. It was, my memory only lasted three to four minutes. So it was like that movie Memento where you pretty much forgot everything that just happened. And I had this real estate agent. I mean, I knew enough about my life and what I was doing. I knew about my business. I knew those things, but I couldn't remember short-term stuff. And so I remember having um, this real estate agent when I went back to, biz to business, my wife, uh, my mom was an agent. My wife was an agent actually also, and she just wasn't active. And then I had this other one who sent me a lot of business over the years and they were patient with me. You know, they would call and give me a referral. Then they call me right back and say, Hey, did you call that person? I'm like what person? It's like get a pad, start writing this down. So I got to a point where I kept a pad on me all the time. And I, I would keep track of my life. You know, who I need to talk to at any time. And if I, if it was not crossed off, I'd call him. Sometimes I'd forget to cross it off. So I'd call a person twice, you know, but eventually I trained my back, my mind back to work again. And then opportunity happened, man. 2009 started to happen where people started coming into Arizona by turnkey real estate. And that's when the investors started to come in and I started staking my claim in Arizona. Then they wanted to go to Indiana. Then they would go to Texas and then they'd go to Mississippi, Tennessee and it went from me just doing business in Arizona for turnkey to 25 states. So because of that, just taking care of that client, that one person, it built up quite quite often. Well, then I had a, a competitor of mine in 2015 say, hey, let's merge businesses. So we did. And we started building a fast. It was getting awesome. And I don't know if he got greedy or what happened, but he completely destroyed the partnership in November 1st, 2015. I had to start over at zero nothing in my database, no clients, and he was taking them all. And I decided, okay, what did I learn through all this? I had three employees and we sat down and said, how are we going to take care of the next referral, the next phone call? So we built a system and we built off of that system like that Chipotle thing I uh, alluded to. And it was just one deal at a time. And within nine months, I was ranked in the top 10 in my company within nine months. And within uh, a, a year and a half, about two years, I was ranked number in the, in the top 20 in the United States. 
for transactions closed. And I stay in that position ever since. Now we're lo- working on, on continuing to grow, but we're doing it by being better at what we do every single day. Because better can equal bigger, but bigger never equals better. 100%, man. Listen, you, you shared uh, right there, you got knocked down three times. Not once, not twice, but three times in that, in that scenario you just said. The first time, obviously, we talked about. The second time is you got knocked off your motorcycle and had to reset yourself, which I can elaborate and I can, I can understand that as well because I had a brain injury when I was 16 years old on a motorcycle also. Had a brain injury, had to relearn how to do it all again. Now I was quite a bit younger, but uh, I can relate to that a lot. And then you start a partner, you know, you start come back from that, you learn how to do everything over again, and you're able to build a business that is so is done so well that you have you attract a partner that you want to merge business with, right? So you merge business, everything blows up, and then it, it blows up, right? And it blows up in the in the negative this time and it dissolves your business. So you have to start over once again. And now through all of those experiences, you've learned that in order to do thing, you have to be better every single day. And so I think that is, I mean, for all the listeners out there that, that have, have stuck with us up to this point in this, in this podcast, you've, you really shared a lot of nuggets so far. Um, which I, I mean, I'm amazed by that, you know, congratulations for that. That's, that's, and I know that's not what you're looking for, right? This is just your life, but um, you really shared a lot there. So thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, I guess let's transition more into, so you have your team now, uh, quite a lot of people that are on it. You've been able to, to ramp that up again. From a mental standpoint, how, how, did you, how did you do that? You know, after being knocked down these couple times, you had, you know, your, your, your merger uh, dissolve. Now you're starting over. I mean, how were you able to get over that, you know, fear of the same thing happening again, of, you know, just, you know, fear of the business not working out. I mean, you already been knocked down like three times. Well, and there was more, there's more accounts than that <laughs> getting knocked down. Believe me, there's other things that have happened that I could go into. This thing will go into a four hour podcast. Cause I make, I, when I think back on it, I mean, you just said three knockdowns. Like, what's the only thing? I'm like, oh no, there were 2012. That was a bad one. 2013 wasn't awesome either. You know, and then you know, I had this really cool opportunity. I got my legs back. I did rescue for the sheriff's office for 10 years, right? I would, uh, I would, I ran their technical rescue team, their off-road rescue team. I repelled out of helicopters. That's a whole other cool bunch of stuff. But what, what you're, you're, you're bringing up there is, is a, is a, is something that I had to make a conscious decision of to let the fear go and look here. And then, and then I think what, what helped was, because I took such severe beatings, you know, it's not something where I learn real easily. I don't learn from just reading in a book or, or right. I have to experience myself. My personality is, is I learn from pain. I've learned from a lot of pain over my lifetime. There's a lot of stories I could share from childhood all the way up. But what it really just boils down to is like, I'm not dead yet. And when you get taken out by somebody's truck, right, a kid, a 17 year old kid in a pickup and you get wiped out by them and you see what it takes to come back for that. And you start realizing, you know, you don't send a pickup to do a tractor trailer's job. I ain't leaving this earth until I'm done with what I'm supposed to do. So what I need to do is just get going on what I need to get done. You know, and so I, I decided that so, there's something that has to be done by me and only I can do. I don't know what that is. For right now, it's closing loans. Then became to be closing loans for real estate investment. Then it became helping people build their investment business. And now it's giving and sharing what I have learned from uh, from an experience, a life experiences that are far beyond what most people experience. When I talk to the average individual, their most difficult thing that day is how they, you know, is that they're not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trivialize how somebody feels, but they're not experiencing a lot of this stuff. They don't know what it's like to take an ass kicking like this. And, you know, and I feel like I'm just spending every day trying to outrun that big foot, trying to kick my ass again today. And sometimes I get caught. The thing it is, it's encouraging to me that I am still here and I ain't going anywhere. So I've decided now, I was like, what do I do with all this experience that I've been given? There's a lot of cool stuff I've been able to learn. So I've got four books out. I've got two more with my editor. I'm going to have one released after these four just got published or on Amazon. I'm going to have releasing one every six months for the next five years. They're not big books. It's like 30 pages. If you can't read 30 pages, then shit, you got problems, right? <laughs> and so I go right into the, into, the, uh, into the topic. I hit it hard. I get right back out. I wrap up the cover, cover and I move. I go on to the next topic. Because my goal is to give as much information as I can to the world 
to know that you know, good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. I've used a lot of bad judgment in my life. Let me give that to you so you don't have to go through the hell that I have gone through and you don't have to deal with the residual pain that I go through. I sit through every single day aching and just things just hurt. It sucks. I'm only 45 years old and I, can, I, I dread the 60s. I don't, I don't take painkillers. I don't go through that stuff. But eventually, one of these days, I'm going to be sitting on a porch, unable to move, and I'm going to be high as hell. <laughs> it's not funny, but I like the way that you're at least it's looking at it. <laughs> you got you to be humorous about it. Right. Well, man, you know, that, that um, you know, kind of the, the number one thing I heard out of that is just to keep going, right? I mean, it's so easy with today's, like, just – instant gratification that everybody's trying to chase after now that they're, you know, it's easy for a lot of people to just give up quickly. And you're saying, no, you know, while you're on this earth, be on this earth, be present, do what you're supposed to do. You know, you've put a why behind what it is that you're doing and that keeps you going, right? That, that makes you wake up every day, go to the office. You're there to help people and educate people. And that is massive. And so uh, if you could give the listeners, I mean, one piece of advice other than just keep going, I mean, what would that be? Like, what is the number one thing that somebody could do when they're facing adversity, right? Because that is, you faced a lot of adversity. You faced a lot of challenges, a lot of problems in your career thus far and in your life thus far. So, I mean, is there one thing you could really point out to somebody and say, listen, like, this is what you need to do to anchor yourself? No, just know where the hell you're going. I yep. see that's that I started really gaining a lot of ground when I decided where I was heading and I wrote it down. Right. So I've got a book out there. Um, the first book's called point your head and heart. Your ass will follow. You got to think it, you got to believe it. And then you just end up there. Right. So it describes how I wrote something down. It comes about. So I say to a lot of folks that, uh, you know, what a rat rod is you familiar yeah. with that term is it's a car. Okay. Right. So most of them, the cool ones, I mean, a lot of cool ones look like it's just, it's all junk, right? It just, it's rusted, and, but it's put together meticulously. So the right kind of person can walk through a junkyard and find every part that you need to build your rat rod, right? If you know what you're looking for. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't have a plan to build this rat rod, you walk through just a junkyard, what do you see? Bunch of junk. Just junk, right? So get a plan. Write the damn plan down and smooth forward because what happens is when you have that plan, the whole world is a big ass junkyard. It yeah. really is because nothing, there's crap hitting you, but then you get to see the little tiny things you can use. You can see, oh, wait a minute, there's that alternator off of this year rig here that'll fit on that because it has this particular pulley, and there's this, and there's this. And what it really boils down to is everything's out there that you need. It's all there. I don't give a crap what condition you're in, what your circumstances are, what type of beating you just took. I just prove I have proven with my life that that's an absolute necessity to take. And then two, it, all it is is a lesson you get to learn from. If you have your head pointed properly, it becomes opportunity. That book shares with you a massive punch in the face I took in 2017, and it ended up being the best thing that could have happened to me that year because I achieved my goals. And I achieved more than my goals because of what I wrote down. I can't, I, I'm not going to share any more than that, but you've got to read it. And it'll help people start pointing their head the right direction. That's the best advice I can give you. Get your head right. Once you get your head right, it doesn't matter what you experience. You'll have the ability to move forward. Now, I wear this hat. People think I just do it because I'm a redneck. No, I wear this hat for a reason. You know, the, the, the people who don't see it, I have a camo ball cap that has a steel patch on it, steel chainsaws, and it has a picture, it has a depiction of a chainsaw. You know, and I have another book called Steel Running. That's book number four. You know, that the coolest tool in the world, the most awesome tool I've, since I was a child was a chainsaw. You know, it could take down trees and do all this cool stuff. It sounded awesome, right? You can see people have cars swarmed out of ice with it. Um, there is, have you ever heard the song uh, by Jackal called uh, Lumberjack? The guy treats it like a saxophone. It sounds awesome. You know, look that up. Jackal, uh, you know, Lumberjack uh, song. Well, it's also not just the coolest tool in the world. It's the most dangerous, as far as I'm concerned, hand tool. You use it, misuse it for one second, you'll take your head off. It is not forgiving. Yeah. It doesn't know the difference between misuse and accidental. It's just bad use will kill you. Well, it, the reason I wear the hat, because it sits on top of the most, most useful, most elegant, and most amazing tool in, our, in, our, in existence, which is the human mind, but it's also the most dangerous. You Amen. don't think That's properly. You don't, exactly. You don't point yourself properly. You will destroy yourself. So every day when I put this on, it reminds me I've got to have it right. 
I've got to hold it correctly. I've got to control that. Because if I don't control my mind, I will wipe myself out and everybody else around me. It's a nuclear bomb. Man, that that's a great analogy. I'm glad that you wear that hat. I like, you know, I would I wouldn't have guessed that, um, but that really puts a lot of meaning to putting that hat on every single day. And the analogy with the chainsaw can't be any more correct, right? I mean, this brain that we are all gifted with is the most powerful thing in the world, and also be the most detrimental thing in the world as well if you let it. So um, that's huge. Well, Aaron, you've shared a ton of nuggets so far. Let's take a quick shift over to the state of the market because I know that a lot of listeners out there, you know, that are in the investment space kind of want to know what a, what a lender's perspective is on where the market's at, where you think we're going to go, you know, what, what, you know, how, how do you think things are currently right now? They're still good. Of course, it's crazy. Of course, there's a lot of fear. This whole coronavirus is throwing people all over the place. My wife's in the medical industry. She works in an ER. She's dealing with coronavirus now, right, in her ER. I've got a client of mine who worked for the CD, CDC for many years. She's in. She's in a, a, at a college now as a professor and teaching all these things. She's like, these are things that we don't need to really worry about as much as people are. They're blowing it out of proportion. But still worry about it, right? Keep yourself right. Keep yourself clean. Live correctly. Live a clean life. Live healthily. We were talking about the market, these crazy swings. It was a catalyst. You know, what I tell all my real estate investors who are starting to think about, well, wait, what do I do, right? My kids are being shut down. You know, the schools are shut down and maybe I should stop doing my investments. I like, no. Now is the time that you sit your child down who's not at school and be have an, have an opportunity to educate them on what you're doing, why you're doing, and the fact that you have the balls to intentionally step forward. You're going to go into, into things on purpose while the rest of the world is, is scurrying around and freaking out. This is when people make fortunes. What's crazy is people look back on history and think, man, if I was only thinking like so-and-so during the Great Depression, I could have made a fortune, right? If I was only thinking like so-and-so during this, I would have made a fortune. Well, now's your damned opportunity. You know, quit this crap. Of, you know, it's like, I'm not going to get something done. I'm going to take a step back. Well, interest rates are starting to creep up. Yeah, they're creeping up, but they're still historically extremely low. You're still. I was on a call with a client right before this call who was kind of freaking out because we didn't lock his rate yet because we were waiting on things to get done. And the market was getting better and better and better anyway. And then Tuesday happened. And Tuesday, the market went to shit for real estate investment. I mean, as far as the, not real estate investment, but for, for finances, right? For, for um, mortgage-backed securities, for where we get our money for loans. We've taken a lot of beating these last four days. That beating has pushed the interest rate up like three quarters of a percent. And he's like, man, I, I don't know, man. Now my cash on cash return went down. I'm like, how much? Take a look at it. It went down 1%. Annualized, right? Well, I said, yeah, yeah, at 1%, uh, but he was getting 14%, now he's at 13%. Like, that's not, where's that bad, right? That's just a cash on cash return. That's not the amortization of the loan, right? When somebody buys a, a real estate investment property with Fannie Mae 30 year fixed financing, when you factor in a $100,000 transaction, right? And then you have a person, you know, they're going to be paying on that, the, the, um, the tenant is to be paying that loan down for you. When they're paying down that loan, it's going to be somewhere in the range of, um, I believe if you factor in, it's 13.33% per year, over 30 years. You're getting a 13.33% gain on your down payment, a 20% down payment for that 33 year, that 30 years just because somebody else is paying off the note. Then you get into the fact that we're paying it back with a in deflating industry, right? The, the rate of inflation today is far exceeds what the government says, correct? That's correct. You know, yeah. if you, That's what we looked at earlier. If you look at you look up shadowstats.com or the Chapwood Index, the average uh, rate of inflation is about 8 9%. Well, when you start factoring that in just 7% inflation, we start showing that, I mean, uh, let's say an average person buys a $100,000 uh, single-family residence, they put 20% down. And let's say today it's at four and three-quarters percent rate. I'm just throwing the number out there because I have these numbers in my head. Well, that says that you're going to pay $80,000 in principal over 30 years, right? And seventy-one thousand in interest over thirty years—that's one hundred fifty-one grand. But when you recalculate the value of every dollar as it relates to the value of the dollar the day you borrowed the money because of inflation, you're not paying back the eighty thousand. You're not paying back seventy-one thousand. You're paying sixty-two thousand and change after you recalculate the dollar's value. You're paying them back with the declining instrument. So leverage high, leverage long, and pay off slow. It doesn't matter what the rate is. Then you get the tax deduction on the rate. The tax deduction itself offsets any difference. It's maybe still, it, it, it makes a difference so small and minute that it doesn't matter. So I tell people, is let the rest of the world freak out and take advantage of it. When they're running around, you get to eat out of their dog dish. 
That's so it gets right. right back to it. Here's your opportunity. Take advantage of it. Quit looking back and saying, if only. Quit if only and just freaking move forward. Absolutely, man. I, I, I love that because, I mean, I'm all about uh, lions and sheep and, uh, you know, that when there, there's a bunch of sheep running around everywhere, you could be the lion feasting on all the benefits that those sheep are just passing over, right? When there's blood in the streets, there's opportunity in the streets. That's when the most opportunity is when the markets are down. Right now, I mean, you know, with the, with the uh, stocks and stocks dropping so much, it's a phenomenal opportunity to buy because everything just went on a big discount. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about, you know, when the markets change, right? If the markets go down, everything just went on sale. If you have access to capital, use it because that's when you yep. really become a uh, force to reckon with. So, um, Aaron, man, you said, shared just a ton of nuggets today uh, about adversity, about the mindset you had to go through in order to go through all this adversity and the run up. Uh, of your business you're gonna have 20 people working for you by the end of next month which is uh truly amazing um you know the state of the market i think those that are uh, have stuck with us on the podcast up to this point and got that little nugget you're basically saying don't stop you know don't stop because there's blood in the streets the best opportunity to, to find really good deals uh and while you still can i mean jump all over it right um, Precisely. And then you know, the other thing I tell a lot of folks right now is like, you know, it's, it's kind of like trying to make the big play in football, right? The, the, the people who make the big play, the people who get on the highlight reel are on the damn field. You can't just sit on the bench and wait for the perfect opportunity to run out there on the field. It doesn't work that way. So stay on the field and get out on the field and get deeper, work with intention. You know, that's, that, that's something a person needs to keep in their mind. Absolutely. It is. And you have to be intentional. That's that, you know, you can't be any further from the truth or any, more on the truth than that. You have to be intentional about what it is that you're doing. A lot of people out there, you know, they get scared and, and they just, they, they want to hide in the corner. They want to go sit on the sideline and watch to make sure they don't get hurt, right? You cannot do that if you want to try to take advantage of what this market has to show us right now. I mean, it's a really exciting time. I still fall back on the fact that it's the most exciting time to be alive in the U.S., period. I don't care what's going on politically, you know, all that stuff just doesn't matter. It's an exciting time, so you should take advantage of it. Um, yeah, Aaron, let the distractions distract the rest of the world. You get focused. That's it. Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. Say that one more time. So let the distractions distract the rest of the world. You just stay focused. Head down. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Aaron, thank you for sharing that today. Are you ready for a lightning round? Uh, we'll end off our call on lightning round today. I'll do my damnedest. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So, I mean, how important, question number one, how important do you feel your mindset is on the success of, 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 of your business? That's 90% of it. I mean, if your mind ain't right, you are not, you are not going to move any direction correctly. If you're not, if you don't have it here, right. Your body doesn't move unless your mind commands it. Right. All right. See, it's a, it's a hundred percent, 90% mindset and a 10% movement as far as I'm concerned. Where focus goes, energy flows. Amen to that brother. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, are you a big reader? Are you reading anything right now that's uh, super impactful? I'm, I'm a huge reader. So the most impactful thing I've ever read outside of scripture would be um, a book by, the, by, by Charles Hanel called The Master Key System. You want to know how to get your head right? You read that. It was published in 1910 as a, um, as a correspondence course. Okay. So you would, you would submit it. Every week he'd send you a letter. You would read the letter. And then you would do the mental exercise every day to train your brain. Okay. So it now comes in a book with 24 exercises. It takes you 24, months, uh, 24 weeks to get through it. Don't just read the book. Do the exercises. If you're not doing the exercises, you're not getting the point. The rest, of course, is on Napoleon Hill stuff. I love, I love um, Outwitting the Devil. Have you ever read that one by Napoleon Hill? Uh, yeah, so I have not read it, but that's uh, Sharon Lecter uh, also wrote that, right? I believe it was the co-author of it. She lives here in Phoenix, matter of fact. I know her personally, uh, which is very cool. Um, so, yeah, I have not I've not read that. It's been on my list, uh, but, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. That is a really good one. What that's you an amazing one. Yeah, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you got to look up his stuff. There's a TED Talk I'll point you to. Just go look up Do Joe Dispenza TEDx Tacoma, as in Tacoma, Washington. You've got to watch that a bunch of times. It shows you how your brain works. And then, of course, I've got to plug my own books, the QJO Initiative, Quit Jerking Off Initiative. You got to, i got to plug my four books. you got to go look those up on Amazon. Just the QJO Initiative, search that. In the, you got to search all in your drop down. Do that search. Find the four. Let me tell you, the, I'm not taking a single dime from that. It's going to charities. It's going to help other people. 
I'm giving you the best data I can give you in small bites and it's going to benefit somebody else. Can the listeners just get on Amazon and look up Aaron Chapman? Is that, I mean, is that where they find you or do they need to look up uh, specific titles? You can look up Aaron Chapman. Um, there is three other offers with that name. Um, and so there's one about religion. You know, he's a, he's a pastor and there's one about nightlife in, I can't remember where at. And then there's these four called the QJO initiative. Uh, one looks like on the cover is a, a rocking chair sitting on a porch. Another one looks like a guy sitting in his dry, in his in his in his truck, and, a, and it's, it's a story about gratitude. And then the third one is called "Quit Jerking Off," and it's a picture of me dressed like a preacher. And then the fourth one is still running and has a picture of my dad holding a chainsaw. So you know, it sounds like you just really add a lot of value with the books that you're saying. And the other people that come up when you look for Aaron Chapman also sound like they're adding value. So um, correct. You know, that, that, that's definitely a good thing. What are, you, what are you trying to learn right now? That's a solid question. Um, it really control. More patience and control. You know, um, it, the, you have to embrace the fact the only thing you can control in this life is you. So I'm trying to be better about controlling Aaron Chapman and letting the rest of the stuff go that are not going to, that I, that I can't control. Yep. Yep. Uh, it, you know, that's a learned skill, letting go. Um, letting go is can free you. I think that is actually the secret to freeing you, to freeing yourself is to, to learn how to let go on things. But, um, you know, that's a really good thing. Thank you for sharing that. How do you like to give back? What's that? How do you like to give back? Um, so one, yeah, I just alluded to the book situation. I'm not taking a single cent from it. I'm not even recovering the cost I put to get it out there. I want other people to benefit from it. And the other is, I want to give enough time to every single client I talk to um, so that they feel confident when they go into business that they're going to be successful. It's not about quoting a rate and quoting costs. It's a matter of helping them get their mindset from the consumer spending money and going into debt to now a business owner. You know, so I, I intentionally give to every single person. Uh, the other is uh, trying to make better people out of my children so that way when they go into this world, they're better equipped and they're giving, uh, they're, they are helping make the world a better place instead of a worse place. Yep. Amen to that. Uh, that's huge. And you're, you're shaping with your kids, you're shaping the future, right? Because our kids are the future. Last thing, where can the listeners find you if they want to get more involved? If they have a, a loan question. I mean, you're closing over, over 700 transactions last year. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to probably beat that again in 2020 here. Uh, you have a, a really good support team with, sounds like you're going to have 20 people supporting you. Um, you know, where can the listeners find you if they want to, if they want to reach out? Uh, Aaron B Chapman.com. So A A R O N B as in boy, C H A P as in Paul, M A N.com. So you get there, you see a redneck sitting on a porch with a steel chainsaw hat and then you're at the right spot. Let okay. me tell you that porch. That's the reason why that first book I read. It's why I got really was writing much of anything that came from me writing something down. I end up there. That's my office in Missouri. It's a cabin built in the 1800s. You know, there's a really, really cool story behind it. I like it. I like it. And actually, I've been to the website. Uh, I know what picture you're talking about. It's the first thing right when you get onto the website. Um, so all the listeners out there, I encourage you to get on there. He actually has some, a lot of content uh, that you can search through on that website as well. Um, and we'll make sure to add in the show notes where the listeners can reach you. So if you're listening to this, just check out the show notes. You'll be able to figure out how to get in touch with Aaron. And other than that, man, you really shared a lot of nuggets today with the, you know, getting through adversity with building a business, with going through and, I mean, you're, 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 you're doing things in a way that's very intentional. And I think that that's going to keep you moving forward for the, you know, long time to come. So thanks for being here. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you sharing everything. And we'll uh, make sure to chat with you again soon. All right, Scott, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for allowing me on. Yep, absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man.